Our next guest remains one of Hollywood's biggest stars. Uh, she also remains unshakably America's girl next door. She's just collaborated with A.E. Hotchner on her autobiography called Doris Day, Her Own Story. Here is Doris Day. <laughs> I love the way audiences look at motion picture people as opposed to television people. It's just like, like they're larger than life. They just stare at you. think you're from another planet. Or you are. <laughs> <laughs> right? True. Yeah. Do you hate and that? What was that about the girl next you door? You hate that, don't you? I was going to come out and give you a sock. <laughs> no, but that's, is sock. that the reason you wrote the book, to dispel all that and get that all oh, out of the way? A little bit, you know, but not the real reason. <laughs> Do you have any control over something like that, or did Hollywood just create that image and, and go with it? Someone created it. The fan magazines created it, I guess. Maybe the films I did created it. Well, you look like That's a, right. a wholesome yeah. Midwestern, yeah, you're Northern good. European type. You know? <laughs> I'm serious. I don't mean that to be funny. I mean, that's, that's America's idea of the girl next door. Actually, she moved out about eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's what do you think, Norm? I don't know. It depends on where you live. <laughs> I, right. I want to get all, I don't know what I mean, I what get all the niceties out of the way. You were, and you still are, you've always been one of the best singers ever. Right. right. Forget the act. Absolutely. I really have, I haven't been singing in a long time, you know, since my special. Do you do it for your own amazement now, just around the house? In the shower, in the car. Not easy to take a shower in your car, by the way. <laughs> But she sings. What is there about you now? I, I, I've, I've been looking through the book. I've read about half of it that doesn't make you the girl next door. I don't know what the girl next door is or who. Well, we, we've just described what it. What does she do? What kind, is she a virgin? I, I don't, you know, they, they say that about me. And um, I don't, I think maybe it's the way I look. Is that what it could be? Definitely. Steve described it perfectly. Mm -hmm. You really do have that, that look about you. That's fresh and scrubbed a, look. The... Uh, American concentration on Hollywood always insists on reaching into any time area and pulling out a girl next door. Betty Grable was a girl next door for a while. Betty Grable? Well, you and I know her, you know, but I mean, on the screen, I'm talking about the image, you know. You think she was? Yeah, she I was think so, of, yeah. She was kind of pure on the screen. Yeah. She wasn't on the screen. Oh, I don't know what she Oh, was. no, no, I don't, I don't really know her. I mean, I didn't know her. She was a great but gal. I thought that she was sort of a... A, you know, kind of a sex symbol. Well, she became the pinup, you know, the cute little picture over her back and stuff. But I think she had that kind of regular gal quality. Ginger Rogers was another in that yeah, category going exactly. back farther. Well, we look uh, similar. Yeah. Ginger. And, uh, yeah. But you said you're not the girl next door. Why? Why aren't you the girl next door? And Mike, I didn't say that. I well, said I don't, know, I don't know who the girl next door uh. is. I, you know, I really don't. You, can we talk about your, your three marriages, which were very much of a disappointment to you, as you if described like, in the book? Sure. Would you like to do that? Yes, I would. Okay. You, you described it in the book, especially the, the first marriage was uh, not only a disappointment, but there was a great deal of sadness attached it to it. It was horrendous. Yes, it was. It was, a, was he, he was a musician. Yes. And he was the father of your son, Terry? Yes, uh-huh. We had a um, uh, correspondence courtship. Hmm. And uh, it's not good. No, I know. I don't recommend it. No, I know one girl had one and married the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> Very risky to do that kind of thing. And you really don't get to know a man mm -hmm. that way. I was traveling, and he was traveling with the band. And all of a sudden, we decided to get married. And we didn't really know each other, and it was very bad. Mm. Now, the second marriage was to another musician? The second marriage was to another musician. That's all I knew. <laughs> I was traveling all the time. And um, he was very nice, but it, it just didn't work. How old were you when you first married? You were very, very young in your teens. Oh, goodness, about 17, I guess. Mm. Yeah. I, reti I retired at 17 huh. and get married. Marriages that young are statistically very risky. Marriages at 40 are risky. <laughs> True. 50. True. <laughs> were, you with Les, you were, were you with Les Brown when yes. you married this first young man? And you said it was horrendous, and you described in the book that he beat you and things of that nature. It was very... 
Yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. How long did the marriage last? Four beats. <laughs> That's when there's okay. a little silence, I throw something in. That's okay. Um, being pregnant, and um, uh, my mother was having a problem. My mother and father were divorced, and I didn't want to go home and be a burden. I couldn't work. So I decided to stick it out until, you know, my son was born, and then I left. So it lasted that long. Was singing with a band what you wanted at that time, Doris? Really? Actually, I was doing it because I was making a living and uh, helping the family. But I liked it. I enjoyed it. I enjoy singing. You sang so well. You know, oh, boy. Still do, for that matter. But it must have given you that satisfaction. I enjoy it, yes. Sure. Yeah. Um, actually, I don't miss not working. Are you serious? Well, I am very serious. How long did it take to get that feeling? Not that you, long. That you didn't miss it? Right off. <laughs> But do you have to have a lot of hobbies and a lot of other interests to be able to handle something like but that? But just living and getting up in the morning is fun, Mike. Yeah. For me, I, I enjoy my friends, I enjoy my bicycling and all kinds of things. Also, in the case of film people, and you're predominantly a motion picture uh, person, despite your records and despite your television shows and all that, and in the case of film people, you can have like six years since your last picture and the world doesn't know that and if they do find out about it they don't care because they see you constantly on you know the, the, the late show or they'll see a, one of your films right. running again that sort of thing uh, if you're off television for three weeks they put you in where are they now you know it's true <laughs> yeah it is isn't it but you worked very hard in pictures one after another didn't you yes i did you know since the age of 16 i just i never stopped so now it's it's really great to uh to enjoy myself and... You started at Warner's, did you? Warner Brothers? Mm-hmm. How long were you there? Seven years. For the full run of the contract? Mm-hmm. How did you meet your third... Had a good time. Pardon? Your third husband, who, who I met at one time and, and knew... Marty. Marty Melcher. <clears throat> he was my agent. Yes, and uh, we were married quite a long time. Was he good for your career, as well as... The marriage? I think so. I don't think people have much to do with your career. I think it's sort of predestined. <clears throat> you know. When somebody is hot and making it, it really doesn't take a genius to keep them on top. I, I, I feel that everything is part of a plan, and, you know, it may sound corny, but I really feel that God is in charge, and that you should just relax and let God do it, and let him take over. And <clears throat> Okay. Uh, that's what I've always done. Does that present you with any problems, such as wondering whether God was in charge of World War II? I'm serious. Because it, 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 what you're taking is a time-honored philosophical position, but it does present... You're right, certain, you're right. I don't know problems. how to answer that. Yeah, I don't either. I'm just going uh, by my own life, and I've always done that. I feel that I've had a lot of, you know, dreadful things happen to me, uh, as we all have. Everyone sitting here. You, you have a story, mm -hmm. and it would make a good book, probably. But um, I felt that everything that's happened to me um, resulted in something good. And I'm, I've just always had a very optimistic attitude. That's marvelous. Yes. When, your, when your husband, when your third husband, Marty Melcher, passed away, it was in 68. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly, uh, we, I picked up a paper and read where Doris Day doesn't know where her money is. She's broke. She's in debt. That sort of thing. And, uh, right. Uh, you hadn't. You were not aware of any of this happening in no. investments. You didn't pay any attention to that. No, Mike. I was not aware. Mm. I trusted my husband, as most women do, <clears throat> and um, he was in charge of the finances. And suddenly, <clears throat> everything gone. Everything was gone. Well, that's <laughs> now that's horrendous to wake up some morning and have somebody say, you really don't have the millions you've earned. Yes, my son discovered it. Wow. You know, that is much more common in our business. That you, I'm sure you are aware of it, Mike. I'm not going to name any of the names, but I will name one. Me. Yeah, you had, oh, you yeah. had a big problem with Big that. wipeout. Really? Arthur Godfrey also. Uh, Arthur Godfrey, yes. You told me about well, when I were naming dinner. names. But a lot of the top names in the business have been either almost totally wiped out or suddenly $800,000 was missing. You know. I mean, big losses like that. And it's in most cases, uh, I'm not talking about your case, but in many cases it's a business manager who was uh, managing the business pretty good for himself. 
<laughs> when you found when, when you found this out, Doris, how old were you? Bitter? What, what what was your what were your thoughts at the time? Suddenly, your son came in and said, "You not only do not have any money, but you owe money." Oh, yeah. Um, I, it's hard to explain how I felt, and he was totally undone. How did he discover it, by the way? The uh, loss. The lawyer, right after Marty's death sent a check to my, my son became the administrator of the estate. And he was not familiar with business and money. So uh, the day after Marty passed away, a check was delivered to my son's house. And it was uh, my check for $60,000. And he was told to sign it right now. And he thought, my God, that's my, that's my mother's check. And so he called the lawyer and, uh, and he said, I can't I can't sign this check. This is for $60,000. And it's my mother's check. So the lawyer said, son, sign it. Hmm. I've got to have that check right away. Now, you must trust me. Your father has trust me, trusted me. Your mother has trusted me. And you must sign the check. He signed it. And after he signed it, he paced the floor. And he called the lawyer the next day. And he said, I must see you. I must see you, uh, Jerry. And Jerry said, why, son? And he said, I want to talk with you um, for the next four days. I want you mm -hmm. to give me every afternoon. And that's what happened. He went to see the lawyer, and he sat there, and he said, I want to see everything. I want to know everything. <laughs> and that's when he discovered it. He did not tell me that he was doing that. Hmm. Did you have any idea of what your total worth was at the time? No. And you I knew I had worked a lot. Oh boy! And and uh, a earned lot of successful it. Successful movies. And earned it, but you know, <laughs> no, see, this is the main reason that I've done the book, and maybe it will be helpful to all of you sitting here and all of you looking in. Um, I found out that money is not that important, and I didn't see it. I didn't have it in my hand, and I didn't really miss it. It's amazing, and I I realized. The, how important it is to have your health oh. and to be happy and to be peaceful and to just really enjoy life every day because it's really good. And I believe that you do because you, your face shows it. Oh, yeah, I do. You exude happiness. But I, I really wait. enjoy everything and my life is so good now. It's better than it's ever been with all of the problems that I've had. And um, it doesn't matter because you can overcome anything. You really can. I don't want to dwell on this, but it's driving me crazy. You won a $22 million lawsuit against right. this character. Mm -hmm. Does he have the money to pay no, you? No, I don't think so. I've gotten a little of it back, but not that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to tell you one thing. You know those dolls that have a round bottom and you push them down and they bounce up again? Mm -hmm. You know those dolls? I always say that I'm like that. <laughs> you know, I've been knocked down and I get right back up. That's and that's the way to go through life, I think. Yeah, that is it. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you a very religious person? You, you know, the moral, the moral of this whole thing, and it's so beautiful, it's very good to have a round bottom. Thank <laughs> 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 hey, you, That's what we all need. That's it. <laughs> You're yeah. terrific. I, I had a feeling you would be. Oh, I had well, I'm just, you that's just the way I feel. And um, I have a good attitude. Why not? Yeah. What are you going to be? Are you going to continue to do television? Or will you ever do pictures again? I don't know, Mike. I might. If something really lovely came along that um, would mean something, you know, I, I, I would probably do it. How do you feel about the fact that there are so few good, meaningful parts for women in motion pictures, and that on the top ten box office attraction, there is only one woman's name? Barbara Streisand? That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, you know, things have changed since uh, I was making my films with Rock Hudson and Jimmy Garner and Cary Grant. You know, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but, you know, but that's the way it is. With, it's with, okay with me. did a picture with Gable, too. Oh, you? yes. I keep seeing Lovely that. man. Yeah, mm. Malaysia. Mike, uh, ordinarily you sound like a real dummy to say I'm an expert on anything because you, you better be if you say that. You know, well, as it happens, I do know rather a lot about humor and comedy because I've studied it in addition to performing it. And in my capacity as some kind of a one-ninth of an expert, I can tell you that Doris Day is one of the very best 
comedy actresses of all time. She can also do serious drama when the occasion requires. But I say this, it, it's also like saying O.J. Simpson plays good football in a sense. He does. Like, yeah. <laughs> does good commercials, too. Yeah. But my point is, Doris has had enormous success, but has very often not gotten the critical appreciation That's true. to which she's entitled. And she really is entitled to it. Well, I'm getting it now. <laughs> oh. There's a thing yeah, like 20 this. Now, that's okay. It's sweet. <laughs> Thank it's you, sweet. Sweet. That's sweet. Sing for us. Just eight Oh, months. no. I'm not prepared. Eight months. <laughs> Sentimental journey. I'll start. What's your key? No, What's your key? No, 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 no. What's your key? Thank you. That's sweet. No. Not Get unrusty. out. Gonna take a sentimental journey. Gonna take my heart at ease. Gonna make a sentimental journey to, to renew old memories. Got my bag, I got my reservation. I spent each dime I could afford. Like a child in wild anticipation, long to hear that all along. Okay. Seven. That's the time we leave at seven. I'll be waiting up for heaven. Counting every mile of track. It's too high for me. Takes me. <laughs> My heart could be so yearning Why did I decide to roam? I gotta take that sentimental journey Sentimental journey 